imagine with me for a second. Imagine two circles, each one inside the other. The outer circle is the edge of our imagination, and the inner circle is the edge of our knowledge. What happens is the outer circle, imagination strides ahead of knowledge, and we reach up into that space to try to find out what's real. And when we find something, we look at it, and we understand it. The inner circle grows, and we ask questions, and that reinvigorates our imagination. And so there's like a, a cycle here. It's a symbiotic relationship that feeds each other. And I think that if we reach out and try to get that thing, it helps us grow. And I saw this firsthand for a long time, actually. For six years, I traveled throughout the United States, and I, I went to schools, grade schools, high schools, and I worked with kids, and I would ask them, what would it be like to live on Mars? Let's imagine what that would be like for a second. What kind of innovations would we need to create? What kind of curiosity would we need to have to explore around that place? And I'd give them specific design challenges and just to spark their curiosity and see what kind of solutions that they could come up with. Um, design challenges like, what would it be like, could you design a habitat that would work in that place to protect yourself from the harsh environment? Could you create a new type of rover that didn't use wheels to walk around so you could get over the rocks and the bumps of all of the terrain? Or what about exploring architecture in a, in a world with low gravity? What would that be like? Or even um, create a solution to accessing the water that's frozen underground and taking it back to your, your uh, community. And, um, and this, one, this one I loved because I would always give students the, the challenge of um, design a useful product, right? So if you're 12 years old, this is a very useful product. And uh, when you jump around in the one-third gravity of Mars, it would be a lot of fun. And so everywhere I went, I saw the same thing. These kids would blossom and they would just express huge amounts of creativity and a desire to learn. And it really made me think that imagination has this power inside of us and it makes us want to know more. It makes us dream about the future and we wonder how we could make that real. And so from then on, I've been very interested in creating experiences that speak to people's imagination so they could start that cycle within themselves and hopefully grow through the process. I wanted to get people to uh, walk inside the atmosphere of a comet, to be able to see a comet's tail grow. I wanted to allow people to feel what it's like to stand underwater and look up and see the playful interaction between waves and light. So, I want to think about this line, right? These two circles and the relationship between them. And that's been sort of taking over my thoughts lately because the more that I think about these, these two circles, imagination and knowledge, and how they work together, the more I'm able to identify how that affects different parts of our lives. In science fiction, for example, Science fiction's painted this picture of, of reality, of this world that exists out there with thousands of planets waiting to be explored. And scientists and engineers would turn our telescopes up to the sky, send new telescopes up into space, and we look, and it turns out that it's true. Can't believe it, over 5,000 planets have been discovered so far in just a tiny part of our own galaxy. And what's more astounding to me than the fact that they're even there, which is amazing, is the fact that they're way beyond anything that we could have imagined beforehand. It's, it's bizarre. I mean, there's planets that actually rain molten glass. Planets that have been cast out of their solar system and are floating alone in space. 
planets that are being described as diamond planets, which is amazing and strange. And so nature has this ability to constantly outdo our imagination. It exceeds our imagination. And the interesting thing is, is when that happens, it just helps our imagination grow. So we found these planets, right? We know that's true now. And some friends of mine and I, we, we couldn't resist the opportunity, of course, because of co then the next thing is we wonder what happens since they're there, what would it be like to visit them? So we made these travel posters uh, to other planets and um, just using our imagination, what would it be like? What would it be like to live on a planet with two stars? What would it be like to live on a planet that all the vegetation is this deep crimson red? What would it be like to live on a planet that's so massive the gravity pulls you down 10 times harder? When you discover something, your imagination grows. And, you know, uh, when the scientists saw something like this, these scientists were searching for a comet, and they had no idea that when they got there, it was going to look like a spinning rubber ducky. How crazy is that? Where did that even come from? How did that happen? You know, when they see something like that, and they don't know exactly how it happened, they have to use their imagination. And so, it's a really interesting process. It powers our desire to learn and to explore. And it powers us on a different level too. You know, it sometimes puts you in a place of vulnerability and risk, in fact. Because it happened to me, 10 years ago, I had this idea that I wanted to be an artist. And, and I really, really wanted to do that. It was my dream, right? And I was reaching out into that, that area of imagination, trying to grab it, and just trying to see if I could make it real. And so there was three categories of art commissions that I specifically made sure that I submitted proposals for. We have public commissions, private commissions, and anything else. I mean, I was searching for anything. And, and I was just putting it out there. I was just seeing what I could do. And I came up with a whole bunch of ideas. I wanted to I'll make a wall act like a puppy. I wanted to turn the solar system into a library. I wanted to create uh, a skylight into a shadow puppet theater and to, and to turn uh, um, fluorescent tubes into a wave machine. And, you know, I also wanted to get these kids to paint the side of a 10-story building. And th that clearly was a bad idea. But I couldn't believe people didn't want these ideas. I mean, I mean they're not that crazy. <laughs> but apparently other people thought differently. And, and I, felt, I felt like I had failed. And, and I quit. And I had to retreat back into a space where, where I was comfortable and where I felt safe and where there weren't that many risks. And I wasn't getting excited about ideas anymore. I wasn't getting excited about the, the, the concept of creating something new. I wasn't you know, doing weird things like roaming through stores and trying to find different pieces to solve some weird solution, some weird problem. Like all of these activities that I did that were in pursuit of, of solving problems associated with these different art projects, I didn't have that anymore. And it, and it nearly broke me. And I had this epiphany or, or an idea or I don't know what to call it but somehow it just it came to me is that I kind of just like ideas. I love pro solving problems and I love 
the process of what I was doing. And that's what I missed. And, and it was this strange thing that happened to me because once I, I thought about that and I understood it, that dream of what I was trying to reach out and grab inside this realm of imagination and like bring it home, it was still there, but in the process, I had changed. I was the one who, who came out the other side a little bit different. And I, I think I discovered a capacity in myself um, that just changed the way I approached it. And so, it just makes me think that the use of imagination is very, very powerful. Einstein has that famous quote, right? Imagination is more powerful than knowledge. And I would see that all over the place. And for a long time, I, I would think, oh yeah, great, you know, that sounds good. I don't, but I don't think I really understood it. It sounds like it, it sounds good, but what does that really mean? And I think that I'm, I'm just starting to understand what that means. Because we all have imagination. I could guarantee that some of you out there have a much greater imagination than I do. But we share ideas and we share conversation and we populate each other's imagination with, with our companionship and being together and talking. And sometimes those, those ideas that we share with each other come into our world and they're so powerful we just want to reach out and grab it. And we want it to be something that we can have and we want it to be something that's real. And I think that that, that process of trying to achieve something that exists out there that's not real yet has a tremendous power. And I think it's in that pursuit that we actually employ our gifts, the greatest gifts that we have, our human gifts, logic, reason, inventiveness, tenacity, hope, courage, all of them. Because ideas are really powerful. Ideas like we may not be alone in the universe. We may find life on, within our own solar system, maybe on the moons of Jupiter. Ideas like you want to graduate from college, or you want to be a mother. Ideas like, I want to be an artist. I think it's in, in pursuit of these things where our gifts shine. And it makes me wonder if, if it really is when we're in pursuit of these things that we're most human. Because I, you know, what other creature out there has the power to balance reality and dreams like we do. I don't know. I don't know, but we can do that. And so I, I know, I, I just feel that life is, this, is a tremendous gift, but I feel like the only way that it will disappoint us is if, is if we don't try and understand it if we don't try and understand ourselves. You know, because, because I, I've, come to, I've come to this idea that, that we are dreamers and we're problem solvers. And our dreams give us new problems to solve and our solutions give us new dreams. And it's like it's this beautiful cycle that defines us. And what if what if the joy and excitement of life, it doesn't come from the process of knowing, or it doesn't come from the comfort of knowing, that comfortable, simple, safe place? What if it's not there? What if the joy and excitement of life comes from the process of discovery? It's those two lines. It's the two circles. Imagine them. The outer circle is the edge of our imagination, and the inner circle is the edge of our knowledge. And in between lies courage, discovery, relationships, 
parenthood, love inside that space where we can reach out and try to grab it lies so many different things. There are so many different things out there to be discovered. Thank you.